Hello, dear students. So we are going to start the second part of the rheology. So we have till now come to know about the importance of rheology in the pharmaceutical industry. Moreover, how this rheology helps in the manufacturing of different doses, right? Now in the second part, we are going to deal with some of the basic terms which are used in the rheology or study of the rheology. Moreover, these terms will be elaborated. How do they act or what are their roles? So without wasting any time, I am your host Dr. Bhardwaj. I am going to start the part 2. So you see first of all the concept of ideal solid. So what do you mean by ideal solid? Ideal solid means a solid when suppose there is a solid or it's a type of solid which upon relaxation of a applied stress come back to its normal position. If you remember uh, during our school day time we used to have a piece of rubber right so rubber or eraser so if we pull the eraser up to some extent and leave it the eraser immediately come back to its original position right so this is a term which we used to say in our general day to day life that is the elasticity so basically you see the ideal soil if we apply the force to the ideal soil then if the force is re removed here a force has been applied to the solid so some sort of deformation has taken place right now upon removal of the force the solid it will again come back to its original position so we know that a body that deforms in an elastic manner right moreover for an ideal solid the energy of deformation this is the energy of deformation you see this is the energy of deformation it is fully recovered means it will leave the energy it will release the energy when the stress is relieved so if we remove the stress the energy will be released right somehow it will come back to its original position right so the reversible deformation it is known as the elasticity now just like the ideal solid there must be ideal liquid or gases right so ideal liquid or gases so what happens in case of ideal liquid or gas so let's suppose this is a plate now the water or the liquid is moving through this plate now as per the definition you see body depth deforms irreversibly means as per the definition ideal liquid they should deform irreversibly in the solid they should reform reversibly means they need to come back to its original position but ideal liquid should not come back to its original position that's why i am telling you that the body that deforms irreversibly means that flows here if we apply the energy the liquid should have or it should flow so the energy of deformation is converted to heat in case of ideal liquid or gas and it cannot recover when stress is removed in our earlier case we can recover the original piece of the solid right but here if we remove the stress the liquid it will not come back to its original position means the irreversible deformation takes place and generally as it is a liquid or it is a gas so it will show the irreversible deformation in the form of flow in the form of flow of the liquid when the shear stress is applied but the thing is that see in reality we have neither a ideal solid nor we do have a ideal fluid so you see the real solid can be deformed irreversibly when subjected to certain forces i repeat real solid i am not telling about the ideal solid real solid can be deformed sorry real solid can be deformed irreversibly when subjected to certain forces suppose you have a uh, piece of soft uh, suppose uh, gel or something like that now 
if you want to apply some stress over that it will deform irreversibly right it will break right when subjected to certain forces and this breakage or this changes if you don't come back to its original position this known as generally the creep right so very few liquids they show the ideal behavior but for most of the liquid their behavior it is always in between the solid sorry this is this should be solid okay this is not soul so between the solid and a liquid so we generally used to call them as a viscoelastic fluid clear now let's discuss some term first of all stress so what do you mean by stress in our day-to-day -day life we used to say we have loss of stress stress means what simply by definition it's a force the force that results in deforming a body you have a piece of solid you have applied some forces over the solid right if this force it is enough to deform the body then stress can be explained in this particular experiment as the force that results in the deformation of the body divided by area over which the force is applied suppose this is a box big box suppose you consider this is a big box we have applied some force so stress means the force that results in deforming suppose it has breakdown or it has compressed now the force that results in the deforming of a body divided by area suppose this is the area over which the force is applied so simply stress is equal to f prime by a where f prime is the force unit of the force is the a is the area the next concept it is the shear stress so what is shear stress see suppose this is a cylinder <coughs> the force can be applied in five different style number one if you pull this cylinder in this direction as well as in this direction both direction if you are pulling this force is known as the tension if we force in this direction from the top if we force in this direction this is known as compression if we force if we apply the force in the, this direction the lower part in the upper part in this direction this is known as bending next is, this is a shear here you see we are applying the shear force like this and last one is the torsion so shear stress you see area over which the force it is applied this is the force shear stress that is tau equal to f by a simply shear stress can be defined as the force per unit area i repeat the force per unit area it is known as the shear stress which is applied to bring about the flow right in a liquid or gas so shear stress is equal to f equal to f prime by a now what do you mean by the velocity gradient or rate of shear so velocity gradient or rate of shear it is generally written as dv by dr i repeat velocity gradient or rate of shear it is generally designated as dv by dr it is defined as the change in the velocity dv small d small v d this small change right that is it is defined as a change in the velocity dv with an infinitesimal change in the distance dr that is rate of shear it is designated by capital g is equal to dv by dr so you should know that higher the viscosity of the liquid the greater is the force per unit area required to produce certain rate of shear so suppose we have two liquids one it is liquid paraffin another one it is water so liquid paraffin will have more viscosity there we need to have more amount of the shear pressure or you can say rate of shear but in case of uh, water the rate of shear it is less here the next concept it is strain what do you mean by strain simply it measures of how much a body deforms relative to its original dimension suppose you have a rubber string in your hand you can pull it up to some length right after some time it will break down so strain means the length up to which you can pull the rubber string that is the strain right so strain 
by definition is equal to change in the length divided by original length it is designated with epsilon so epsilon is equal to dl by l yeah the next concept it is the shear rate so what do you mean by shear rate see in the fluid we are interested in the rate at which the strain is produced right when the shear stress is applied i repeat in the fluid we always interested to know the rate at which the strain is produced when the shear is applied so or by definition shear rate s which is the difference in the velocity dv between the two planes of liquid separated by a distance dr that is dv by dr so you see force acting per unit area it is directly proportional to the dv by dr clear so dv by dr it is a shear rate and force acting per unit area it is the it is the the first part it is the stress so i hope you people have enjoyed the class thank you everyone you can if you like the video you can press the like icon you can share this video and you can subscribe to my channel thank you once again